Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Benson Chipangano. I'm gonna be the moderator for this afternoon's event. Now we most certainly know that for you to build um, a good network, there has to be knowledge behind the building of the network. And most of the things that we are taught from our background and where we are coming from is to go into an event and grab cards from different people. But what we don't know is how to build a meaningful relationship from those cards that we get from these people. Unza Baker, in conjunction with Volvo Listing, has brought to you this event tagged Positioning Self for Leadership. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm certain that your purse or your wallet is tired of keeping those cards that you get from speakers at different events without using them. So it's about time you learn how to personally brand yourself and how to network yourself for you, for you to build a network that can land you opportunities that can change your lives. My guests this afternoon um, include uh, Sisiku Imata Nasinda, who is an ACCA Chartered Accountant, International Development Practitioner, and a mentor with over 15 years experience in intergovernmental and quasi-governmental institution. He is a recipient of the ACCA Zambia National Member Advocate of the Year Award for 2020 and is ranked among the top four ACCA advocates in Sub-Sahara Africa. Key areas of interest and specialization include project management, leadership, youth development, health and fitness, investment, and creating high performance cultures. During his career, Susiku has been involved in implementation of multi-million dollar development project and major change initiative process improvement and staff training and development. As a founder and chairperson of youth in leadership, he has an extensive experience mentoring and coaching students and young professionals. Through his mentorship matter program, he volunteers his time mentoring university and college students across Zambia. Susiku is currently pursuing a master's of philosophy in development finance at uh, uh, Stellenbosch University, South Africa. Additionally, he obtained SCCA from Zambia Center for Accountancy Studies, Zika in 2013. And he, he is a professional, he has a professional certificate in development practice from the University of Minnesota, USA. He is a certified trainer in youth enterprise and development. And uh, he's a member of SCCA, an associate of Zika. And he's cur he currently works as a project financial management specialist at the Rural Electrification. Um, good afternoon, Susiko. You can just say hi to the audience. Good afternoon, uh, Captain Benson. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much. My, my second guest this afternoon is Ndela Sichizia, who is a marketing expert with over 16 years of experience in marketing strategy, branding, and communication. And having worked on various projects and having uh, served different portfolios with Barclays Bank, Multi-Choice, Atlas Mara, and the Zambia Institute of Marketing. He is a founder and a managing partner for Mwenzo Innovations Limited, which is a marketing agency and currently working at Zamtel as marketing expert. Good afternoon, Ndela. You can just say hi to the audience. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Pleasure to have you and to be with you this afternoon. Okay, so I'll just go through the do's and don'ts of uh, uh, all the rules that we are going to follow as we uh, take the meeting on. So firstly, I would like everybody to be armed with papers and pens and to take notes because uh, a lot of information is going to be unleashed here and you, you might just want to take notes. And uh, do not unmute yourself from the microphones 
and having your, your, your video is optional, even though we would love to interact with you uh, visually as well. Please write your questions in the chat box during the course of the presentation, and they'll be addressed during the question and answer session. Raise your virtual Zoom hand if you'd like to verbally ask your questions during the Q&A session. Be open to learn and participate in any activity that a speaker or moderator will bring up. Invite a friend and join in. Have fun. Now, as we begin the, the program this afternoon, you and I realize that opportunities do present themselves on a daily basis. But the question is, do you take advantage of these opportunities? They say your network is your net worth. So I want you to buckle up and allow this gentleman to raise your net worth to that, to that of Bill Gates in network terms. Allow me to welcome our first speaker to do his presentation. And this is no other than uh, Susiku Imata Nasinda. He's gonna talk about how to build your social capital, meaningful relationships, and networks. He's going to speak for about 25 minutes. I want you guys to be on board. Sisiku, you can take it up. Uh, Captain Benson, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. Uh, in this country, we are so used to listening or hearing good things about ourselves or about people only when they are gone. Uh, just um, over the last couple of, uh, of days and weeks, we have been mourning with the Tanzanian people over the loss of uh, President uh, Magufuli. And um, we have seen an outpouring of love from across the world. And um, it's good to note how great a leader he has been. But I'm glad that you have said a lot of wonderful things about me while I'm still alive. So it's good to hear those things. And uh, uh, I'll go straight into the presentation, which is basically talking about building strong networks, social capital, and meaningful relationships. Okay, so um, what's on the table? We will focus on um, just giving a brief background about networks, about social capital and uh, meaningful relationships. In case some of you may be coming um, uh, into contact with these terms for the very first time, or you may have heard them and did not quite understand what they actually mean. So this afternoon, we will define networks, uh, social capital, and then we'll delve into the meaning of meaningful relationships. I'll also talk about why you need um, the three, why you need uh, strong networks, why you need uh, strong social capital, and why you need meaningful relationships as a professional. Um, then I'll go into establishing strong networks uh, and taking advantage of your social capital, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. As you may be aware, these are unprecedented times uh, uh, characterized by disruption and uh, a departure from the old way of doing things and paving way for what we are now all calling the new norm. So it's important for us to understand how we need to transition uh, from the old way of doing business into the new way of doing business. Then I'll also talk about um, the importance of building professional uh, professional profile on social media. Here, I'll talk about all types of social media, but we'll zero in on LinkedIn, which is a professional um, media, professional social media, which is appropriate for professionals like yourself, professionals like me, who are studying, uh, who are already thriving in our own careers. Then I'll zero in on the aspect of positioning. And uh, that will basically summarize what I would have been talking about in points one to five above. So all of you, I'm glad that you took time to join. We are so honored to have you. 
I would like to take special recognition of uh, students from the University of Zambia, uh, those that are studying business and economics. Uh, University of Zambia is the largest and the highest institution of learning in the country. And uh, we appreciate the fact that uh, you're putting in your very best to achieve good grades and also to acquire knowledge that will be used in transforming this country and taking it to the next level uh, post COVID-19. I'd also like to take recognition of other individuals that may have joined uh, through the poster because I know it was flying uh, on social media. Uh, uh, some colleagues from the Mentorship Matters program that I run, uh, chartered accountants and those that are preparing to be, to be accountants. Thank you so much. So, as students, the greatest challenge that we have is to find jobs. We are always worried about whether we'll be able to find meaningful employment once we graduate from employment. We're always worried about whether we'll be able to establish meaningful businesses that will be able to attract customers, that will be able to get contracts in government or in the private sector. Those are the kind of anxieties that consume students. Will I be able to get a job? Just recently, we've seen uh, a surge in the number of graduates across the country that are making noise on social media, knocking on government offices, making their case. Uh, most recently, we saw uh, students, uh, uh, graduate doctors and medical professionals who are knocking on the doors of government, uh, saying that they had graduated, some of them uh, very recently, uh, some of them not so recent, but have not been able to get placement. The job environment in Zambia, as well as globally, has been shrinking. And the pace at which that shrinkage has been happening has been accelerated, accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic. I am sure you are aware that there are some industries across the world that have shut down or that have been impacted negatively. One of them is the airline industry. The other one is the tourism sector. The medical sector seems to be thriving medical sector and pharmaceutical se se uh, sectors seem to be thriving, but other sectors, education has been hit hard. As students at the University of Zambia, some of you are now being forced to learn from the confines of your home through online learning. What that means is that the university is no longer generating as much income as it would through student accommodation and through other avenues of any income. So as businesses get affected, jobs also get affected because their ability to remunerate their staff uh, goes down and shrinks. Now, in the midst of this, all this, what you need to know is that over 70%, over 70% of professional jobs are not obtained through advertisements. What that means is that once you graduate, if there are 10 people that are applying for a job, three of those will be able to get jobs easily while the rest of the 70% will not be able to get the jobs easily. What that means is that if 70% of the jobs are being obtained through networks and networks are tiny, they, are, they only represent about 30, percent of the total job space. So what you need to do is to how to break yourself, how to break into, how to break into the 30%. If you're among us the 10, how do you become among us the lucky three that, that, that get employed? So many jobs are filled through referrals. It is about knowing uh, somebody who knows someone. Usually, the challenge that young people have is they always ask themselves, okay, how did you get this job? Who did you know? And here we are not talking about nepotism. We are just talking about the power of networks. We are talking about how you can leverage on your networks, how you can take yourself into that bracket of people who know other people so that they can help you. If you're a medical doctor and you're struggling to find a job, if you are an economics graduate, business graduate, and you want to find a job, usually what you do is that you start from your community. Who are your neighbors? Is there an MD in the community? Which church do you go to? Is there a finance director? Is there a banker in your community? 
you look at the associations. When I, I attended the webinars that Unza Baker uh, organized, who were the speakers, who were the moderators? Can I tap into their networks so that they can help me to find the job? So this is what we are talking about. We're not talking about nepotism. Networking and nepotism are two different things. So many jobs are filled in through referrals. Why referrals? Because it's easier to deal with people that you know. It's easier to trust people that you already know. Rather than starting from nowhere, sometimes uh, because of the delicate nature of the business environment, because of the delicate nature of the job environment, you want to employ people that are trustworthy, people that are going to deliver, people who have a track record of performance and who have a good history uh, to their name. So that is why employers are constantly looking for referrals. So when there's a job opportunity within a big bank, what will happen is that the top leadership will, will sit down and say, okay, how are we going to uh, uh, recruit people? Uh, they are going to put up an open, open advertisement, usually according to uh, the demands of practice, according to corporate practice. But usually what happens is that once you are shortlisted, those who are shortlisted and make it to the interview table, those who already have established networks within the organization, stand a better chance of pulling through. Why? Because somebody will be able to speak for them and somebody will be able to defend them and be able to give them a chance. So business opportunities are no different from employment opportunities. They are also often shared amongst friends. So if there's a business opportunity right now, we are in the uh, farming season, uh, the rains are just about to leave or have they left, uh, there will be a huge uh, harvest of maize across the country due to the heavy rains that we experienced. For you to be able to supply your maize to the FRA, for you to be able to get your payment on time, you will find that you have to belong to certain uh, groups of individuals, influential individuals that are able to tell you when it is, when is it the right time for you to be able to harvest your crop? When is it the right time for you to be able to sell? Before the floor price is announced, people in the network already know the president on Monday is going to be announcing the floor price for maize. Those outside the network will not know. What will happen when Monday comes? Instead of listening to the radio and staying glued to TV to wait for the announcement, they'll go about doing non-value adding activities, which will not help them. So it's important as an individual that you break into those networks. So um, individuals still lack the skills that are needed to successfully network. Why we're having this discussion this afternoon is for you to be able to improve your networking skills. So some quick uh, definitions that will just, uh, that will just help you. So um, uh, networking, basically deliberate action or process of interacting with others. You have to be deliberate. The objective to exchange information and contacts. Networking takes various forms. It can be social networking. One of the most common social networking platforms is uh, Facebook. Another one is Instagram. So there you just go for social, uh, for social reasons. You just meet people for, for, for social reasons. So usually even the people that you connect with on Facebook usually don't take them seriously. Why? Because it's all about games. It's all about playing. So it's all about sharing humorous moments as opposed to sharing about um, uh, serious activities. Then there are other platforms um, uh, that are used for business and for professional networking. Those include LinkedIn, where it's extreme, extremely, ex strictly and ex strictly business and extremely professional. So, take for example, for those of you that are already on LinkedIn and those of you that are on Facebook. For me, what I do, if I receive a friendship request on LinkedIn, I take it seriously. Why? Because I see money, I see growth, I see prosperity. When I receive a connection on Facebook, what I do is that I go to their profile, check what they've been sharing over the last five years. Does it re resonate with me? If it doesn't resonate with my values, I just delete the request and forget about that person. But on LinkedIn, it's very, very rare that you will get uh, friendship requests from people who are not serious about their career. So in my own uh, definition, I would say Facebook, Chintuwingi, uh, and uh, LinkedIn. So if you are a professional, ask yourself, where do you want to be? 
Chintu wingi, or you want to distinguish yourself and be Kumayati. There are also other kinds of uh, networking, such as uh, religious networks. It's important for you to have diverse friends and connections that care about your success. Go to your fe uh, Facebook uh, profile. Who are your top five friends? What do you learn from them? Who are your top five connections? Do they inspire you every day? Or are they just talk, uh, talking about local uh, telenovela? Or they are just talking about uh, other issues like politics, things that may not necessarily build you and help you in your career. In terms of social capital, social capital, we are looking at it from the point of a social safety net. The way I would define social capital is if you were involved in uh, a tragic incident uh, just now, who are the top five people who you can call and you know they are going to be right there on time? If you had a problem, you lose your job and you need a new one. You lose your business, key customer, closes down shop because of COVID and they were your uh, main uh, source of income. They can no longer buy your product or your service and you need a new one. Who are the top five people that you can call and they will come to your rescue? That is what we are talking about in terms of social capital. So networking and social capital are different. Networking usually is about building your profession, taking it to the next level, what you take to the table and what you uh, get. Social capital is about support in times of crisis. If you have established a new business, you are a university graduate and you come up with a business idea, who are the top five people that you can go to to say, I've got this idea, I would like to deal in, 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 in hair, I'd like to deal in IT, I'd like to uh, start up a, a, an educational uh, program where I can do online learning for students at the University of Zambia. Uh, and um, the University of Zambia is able to subcontract me to, to provide uh, the backbone or the platform for online learning. Something like that. So social capital is about uh, society, the people that you interact with, and those who can come through for you in times of trouble. Meaningful, um, meaningful relationships. In terms of meaningful relationships here, I'm basically just talking about having symbiotic relationships. If you send out a friendship request on Facebook, if you send out a friendship request on LinkedIn, or if you receive a friendship request on, 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 on LinkedIn, or somebody wants to follow you on Instagram, how are you going to benefit them? And how are they going to benefit from you? You need to critically think about what you take to the table and what you receive from the other parties. So meaningful relationship is about building symbiotic relationships that are dependent on each other. You take your strengths after doing a SWOT analysis, you take your strengths after identifying opportunities, and then you depend on others to complement you on your weaknesses, because your weakness is somebody else's strength and your strength is somebody else's weakness. So do a SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Once you identify what your strengths are, take them to your networks, take them to your social capital. Once you identify what your weaknesses are, seek out for those weaknesses in your social capital and in your network so that you become a whole uh, professional and a whole human being. Why networks? Why social capital? Why meaningful relationships? Your network is your net worth. Who you are found with says a lot about where you are going. Just uh, on, 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 is it on Thursday, we were watching a game when Zambia was playing. One of the players who are playing in that game, uh, a striker, Patson Daka, uh, plays for uh, Salzburg, one of the most prog progressive teams right now. Some of the players that he was playing with are playing in the local league. How is it that same country, same food, same Oshima, same schools, one is able to play in Europe, one is struggling to find a good team locally. They always even have to sit on the bench. Your network is your net worth. You need to hang out with people who are going to tell you to say, you know what, you can play for a team in the USA. You can study in Malaysia. You can go uh, get a scholarship in China for you to do your postgraduate studies. Those are the kind of people that you need to surround yourself with. People who will challenge you to go to the next level. Again, I already say that over 70% of jobs and businesses uh, are discussed in networks. 
what you need to do is to identify what those networks are and find a way of penetrating those impenetrable walls, impenetrable walls, break through them. Just last week, I was, uh, I was at the Central Bank of Zambia. The Central Bank of Zambia is highly fortified. When you look at the walls of the Bank of Zambia, they're highly fortified. Now, that's a place that I frequent due to my work. But the time that I was studying, when I was a student like you, I never ever envisaged of uh, uh, going to the Bank of Zambia so easily and so frequently. The first time I went to the Bank of Zambia was in 2014. Uh, my older sister had to make an appointment and we went, we were going to discuss uh, uh, some, 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 some business uh, issues there. When we reached the entrance, the security stopped us. They had to call the person inside, the person that we were visiting, to confirm that indeed they had such an appointment. We had to wait in the waiting room for about 10 to 15 minutes until we were cleared and ushered into, 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 into the Bank of Zambia. But today, immediately I arrive at the security checkpoint. All of them are smiling at me. They know me. They usher me into what I call the corridors of power. As an individual, ask yourself, how will I penetrate into those corridors of power? How will I able to flow into such areas that are guarded and restricted, but be able to penetrate them and move and thrive with ease? That is what I'm talking about when I say social uh, networks and penetrating into those networks. Big deals are discussed over coffee, in elevators, at the golf course, during family events such as weddings and funerals. Even the kind of funerals that you attend, colleagues, please be selective and intelligent about them. Some of those places are attended, uh, some of those events are attended by highly influential people, and it's very easy to interact with the governor of the Bank of Zambia or a minister at a wedding. If they're the guest of honor at a wedding, don't be quick to go and get food. When they say table number 10, you're always the first, you rush, you get the full plate uh, such that you even feel ashamed to interact with others. What I normally do is that when I go for events, I'm always the last to eat. I identify tables where people who walk in the corridors of power are seated. And when they're on the queue, they're going to get their food. I also sneak myself in there and say, good evening, sir. My name is Susiku. This is what I do. Here's my business card and I'm asking for your number. And when you put them on the spot like that, they will definitely give you their number and then you say, okay, I'll reach out to you. That's how you penetrate into those uh, corridors of power. The thing is about getting yourself into the corridors of power, who you network with and their relevance to your career matters more. It's not about having a large network. Some of you thrive in having 5,000 connections on Facebook. Some of you thrive in having 3,000 connections on Facebook. What is 5,000 connections if when you have a crisis, none of them can come through to your aid? I would rather have five connections who, if I know that I'm in trouble, when I send them a WhatsApp message at midnight, they're going to jump out of their bed and say, my brother needs help. I'm going to go to him. I can't come to where you are. I'll send you some Airtel money. Um, I don't have a job right now but my friend in Dela works for a giant corporation in this country. Please go and knock on their door and they're going to help you. That is what we mean when we say social capital and uh, networks. Networking is an avenue for exchanging ideas, finding new opportunities, improves your creative intellect, helps you to get support from high profile individuals, your growth, status and your confidence improves and increases and it helps you to develop long lasting relationships. All good leaders thrive on strong networks. When Nelson Mandela was in prison, there was a strong network of individuals outside the prison who were speaking on his behalf, who were paying legal fees, who were telling the whole world about the injustice of the apartheid regime and who advocated for his release. When he was in prison, he was very vulnerable, but there are people who believed in him. His social capital was so strong that even after 27 years in prison, now some of you may not even have lived 27 years yet, but Mandela was in prison for 27 years. And when he came out, people still say, this is the man that we want to lead South Africa. Am I speaking to somebody? So talk about networks. I just spoke about Patson Daka, who scored a brace in the game on, uh, on Thursday. How did he get himself to where he is? 
When he started playing, he probably thought about who are the key players in Zambia that have played outside the country. He thought about Kalusha Wale. He thought about Collins in Besuma. He thought about other players that have played out. He also thought about those who succeeded and those who did not. And he told himself, I want to succeed. He focused on those that succeeded and also told himself, what don't I need to do for me not to fail? Look at Ms. Ingamelu. She was just born um, in a rural setting. She lived uh, in Shimavala at a farm. Today, she's one of the most powerful CEOs in Zambia for a blue bank. So for those of you that are studying business and economics, you probably have a desire to work for a bank one day. She did not get there by, by chance. Some of the opportunities that she enjoyed came because of her parents, because of her associations at school. So while you are there at the University of Zambia, while you are there at Zikas, while you are there at that private college, what you need to do is start making friendships that will yield results in future. Don't spend time with people that are not going anywhere. If you are ego, abash the chickens and you don't need to be apologetic about it. The people who will speak for you in future are people in your networks. The stronger your networks, the stronger your social capital, the better. If you talk about uh, Dambisa Moyo, the bottom uh, left there, she was born in Zambia. She knows the test of Mushima. She has slept in this, in, in this environment of us, of ours, which is characterized by heat at, at times, very hot in October, uh, heavy rains, roads impassable. Those who live in Lusaka know what it means to swim through the roads of Lusaka. But that's the environment where Dambisa Moyo, global influential economist, uh, comes from. And yet she's able to thrive on the global space. It's because the time she was studying, she was able to identify uh, people, strong people to assist her and give her uh, directions. Uh, so in the COVID-19 pandemic, God has moved from the physical to the virtual. It's very important that you also adjust yourself. The world will never go back to what it used to be yesterday. The world is pressing forward. Make sure that you enhance uh, your digital skills, sharpen your digital skills, very, very important. Have a LinkedIn account. Abash Facebook. Spend time on Facebook, yes, but spend more time on LinkedIn because that's where professionals, people that are going to recommend you for job opportunities are. They're not on Facebook. Yes, they are, but they don't pay so much attention because after all, Facebook itself is a place of social interaction as opposed to professional interaction. Take your online platforms very, very seriously. What do you post and what don't you post? Because there are people who believe that not posting at all is okay. You can't be on a social media platform and not post anything for two years, for three years. Yesterday, I received a friendship request for somebody who last posted something in 2015. I just deleted the request because I asked myself, what am I going to learn from this person? What is their life all about? Connection is not just about you connecting with the other. When you send a friendship request, the other person is also connecting with you. Remember what I said about symbiotic relationships. Even if somebody is older than you, there's something that they can learn from you. Why? Because they are busy in their offices. Maybe they want to know what's happening in the economy, locally and globally. So if you're an economist, share stuff about, about economics. Share when the Bank of Zambia does, announces the monetary policy rate. As an economic student, share that on your Facebook. Don't just talk about local telenovel, teleno, teleno, telenovela, which only focuses on polygamy, polygamism and other stuff. How is polygamy going to help your career? How is, how is politics going to help your career? It won't help you in any way. So the people that you connect with, think about them. Ask yourself, what am I helping them to achieve? Why am I connecting with them? What's the purpose? In order for you to build a professional profile on social media, there are some rules. Write informative posts on your expertise from your experience perspective. I repeat, if you're an economist on Facebook, on Instagram, on Snapchat, post about economics. Don't post about politics. Don't post about soapies. Don't post about anything. Talking about going to wire and the stuff that is happening around. Don't be a gossiper. When people see a post from you, they must run to it because they know that they are going to be positively impacted. 
Be bold about what you do. There's nothing impressive about being apologetic. Make sure that your profile picture is on point. Make sure that the, 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 the posts that you make are concise, informative, and educative. It may take a bit of time, but ultimately, you will get to where you want to go. In the process of social engagement, ask yourself, what is my motive? What is my intent of connecting with Indela? What is my intent of connecting with Captain Benson uh, Chipangani? What is my intent? What's the intention of connecting with Lusekelo? Be clear about the intent right from the start. I'm sending this friendship request because I want them to help me get a job in future. I want to buy their product. I want to sell them my product or I want them to introduce me to their friends. Don't use people. People know it when you want to use them. In, in networking, the golden rule is that never ever use people for your benefit. Just know it and they'll run away from you. One of my close mentors and friends, Felix Garamukanibanda, calls it relating first. When you meet someone, before you present them with their problem, hi, my name is Lusekelo, I'm a student of economics and uh, uh, business at the University of Zambia. Before you say, I'm looking for a job, establish a relationship with them. If they're a CEO, tell them, Mizinga, I know that you are running one of the best banks in Zambia. Congratulations for successfully transitioning Barclays Bank to APSA. I know it was not easy, but you did well. We are so proud of you. We feel so proud to belong to a generation where you are alive. Esteem people and then establish a clear motive and purpose for the connection. Target, don't just send friendship requests to everyone that is on social media. Have few people that you connect with, relate with them well. Outcome, I already said, ask yourself, what do I want to get out of this relationship? LinkedIn is one of the most important um, online platforms uh, that you need to be on. If you're not on LinkedIn, I'm asking you, then where are you? If Hello. you're not on LinkedIn, where are you? Hello, can you get me? Hello. Yes. Uh, I need to ask a question. There's something that you said about social media, not being on social media. Hi. Um, excuse me. Um, We'll, we'll put a question and answer at the end of uh, the session. He's doing a presentation now. So if you can just write your questions in the comment box or you can wait at the end. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you to ask those questions. Right now, please, you can switch off your microphone. No problem. Right. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Question time is coming. And thank you, moderator, uh, Captain uh, Benson, for that guidance. So as a professional, you need to focus on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, I'm asking you, where are you? If you are not on LinkedIn and you're on Facebook, then you have misplaced priorities. If you are on Facebook and LinkedIn and you spend, you make 10 posts on Facebook and none on LinkedIn in a day, then you have misplaced priorities. Are we together? You, you are a professional. You are studying at Zambia's most important educational institution. You are studying at Zikas, you are at Evelyn Horn, you are at the Copper Belt University, you are at Eden University. Your social media must be filled with comments, posts that relate to your, to, to your profession. Of course, Pats on Daka will post about, about football on his, on his, on his uh, platform. You will not see him talking about Bible verses and talking about politics. No, politicians are for politicians. If you are not a president of a political party, don't talk about politics on your social media platforms. Are we together? If you are not a footballer, every weekend you are posting about Manu, Liverpool, Quito United. If you are not a footballer, that is not your role. If you are an economist, you want to be known as such. When people come to your work, they must know what you live for and what you exist for. Most Fortune 500 executives, the most important companies in the world, are on LinkedIn. Things not to do on social media. The five common societal mistakes, spellings. If there are people in this room, Gen Z, millennials, there's a problem with grammar and shorthand. This kind of writing is not acceptable, colleagues. We are not dealing with Chongololo stuff. 
We are professionals that are preparing to run this country. Point number one, no shorthand on your social media. Never. It's not acceptable now. It will never be acceptable in future. Controversial topics. Never ever talk, comment on topics that are controversial in the country. Are we together? Don't post, don't comment. If you're not posting on your, even commenting, there's big pages in this country, which you all know, those big pages, which represent the views of everyone. Don't comment on those. Controversial topics, don't comment on those. Your name should never be found on the top page in this country. I don't know what the top page in the country is in terms of social media, on LinkedIn, on, on Facebook, or, or on Twitter. Don't comment on public media on controversial topics. Don't comment on gender and religious topics. Do not slander bishops. Do not slander females. Do not slander men. Do not talk about politics on your page. When I come to your page, if I just find politics, I delete the friendship request. If you're already my friend, I unfollow you or I block you. As a professional, don't comment on politics unless it's extremely necessary. You can talk about those in amongst your friends, in your circles. People who don't post on social media doesn't mean that they don't have things to talk about. They have. They only talk about those things with their friends. Are we together? Obscene jokes. You are studying at Unza, but your profile picture looks like you are, you are Zodwa. You are a professional studying at Zikas. You are wearing vests and muscle t-shirts on your, on, on, your, on, your, on your profile picture. Wear a tie, wear a nice shirt. When people come to your home, they should know what you stand for and uh, what you uh, stand for. So I'm almost now beginning to wind up my presentation. To grow as an individual, there are four aspects. I've developed a growth model called um, um, the Balance 360 um, Personal Development and Growth Model. This is my own initiative. Uh, if we had more time, I would have gone into each one of them. But what I'm trying to say is that in order to grow as an individual, you must grow in four aspects. The intellectual side, that is being a student, acquisition of knowledge, the physical side, make sure you exercise during the period of COVID-19, exercise, play soccer, run, walk, have enough sleep, eat well. The spiritual side, make sure that you live for a greater goal. Apart from uh, studying at the University of Zambia, what else do you want to do in order to leave your mark on earth? When you leave this earth, like Magufuli has gone, what will people say about you? That focuses on your spiritual side. But in this particular talk, we have just been focusing on aspect number two, which is the social and emotional. For you to have strong networks, for you to have strong social capital, is dependent on how emotionally intelligent you are. How good are your interpersonal skills? I know some of you may be introverted, you may not be good speakers, you may not be good writers, so you don't want to share stuff on your Facebook. Start learning. Learn how to write stuff on social media. Learn how to speak to people. Coach yourself on how to relate with others. Work in a team. Living in isolation is not an option anymore. For you to survive, you have to work and live with others. The forces of positioning, which is almost the final part of my presentation, Remain confident. You cannot network if you are not confident. Abash timidity. What you need to do is start developing self-confidence. How do you develop that? Establish a good self-worth. Know that you are worthy. Know that you are deserve, deserving. Know that you are qualified. Know that you belong. Know that you are a human being who is entitled to the same kind of opportunities, liberties, and privileges that the others are uh, obtaining. Be curious. Magufuli has died in Tanzania. There are people in this room who may not know that Africa has lost a child. Zambia was playing on Thursday. There are people who don't know that Zambia was playing. What is happening this weekend? Do you know what is happening in Kitwe at the University of Zambia? Are you aware that a lot of colleges and universities are migrating from physical learning to online learning? Be curious. Once you are curious, it helps you to start um, preparing yourself for the future and to engage in meaningful conversations. Imagine you go to a table where they're discussing a topic over which you don't have an idea. It makes you look backward. It makes you look disengaged. So be curious. Current affairs are very, very important uh, in networking. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Send messages, call people. 
don't flood people with messages. Somebody, you send a message, they don't respond. You send another one, they don't respond. You send another one, it becomes annoying. Learn how to communicate, let it be two way. If you send text and there's no response, try calling. If you try calling, there's no response, go there physically. If you go there physically and they tell you they can't meet you um, because of COVID, go to their LinkedIn, find a way of engaging them, speak through their friends, those people who know them. They'll speak about you because they know you and that's the power of networks. Be deliberate and always establish uh, symbiotic relationships. Folks, in closing, I just want to draw you to what Marian Williamson says. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant? Who am I to be gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not save the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people wouldn't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We are born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. Those who have strong networks, those who have strong social capital, have those privileges because they are deliberate. They are not shy, they are not apologetic. They are always making strides to improve themselves. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. My hope is that through this presentation, you've been able to learn something about networks, social capital, and establishing meaningful relationships. I wish you well in all your endeavors, and I hope that through this presentation, you will be able to be inspired to impact others more positively. This has been your friend and brother Susiko Imata Nasinda, ACC Zambia National Member Advocate of the year 2020. I thank you. Wow, brilliant. Thank you so much, Susiko. You were burning, you were on fire. This is deep content. I'm sure people are inspired. I'm sure people are ready to go uh, on LinkedIn. Very insightful content indeed. Yeah, I've also taken a lot of things um, you know, at hand, especially one of the most important points that you brought out is not just being a spectator on LinkedIn. It's actually uh, marketing yourself, like uh, selling yourself by sharing the content of who you are as an economist, a business administrator, an accountant, or anything. And not just being there to watch, but projecting your image out there to the world. Very insightful content. Thank you so much. Um, for those that have just joined us, this is uh, University of Zambia Business and Economics Association's Debates Committee in association with Volvo Listing, an event tagged positioning self for leadership. And I'm very sure every person on this platform is ready uh, you know, to beat the odds like Nelson Mandela has, to beat the odds like Susiku uh, Imata Nasinda has done. Uh, buckle up because we're about to have our second uh, speaker. Before we do that, I would ask Susiku to make the presentations available to Lusekelo and those participants that want to have uh, access to this uh, presentation. You can reach Lusekelo and get the uh, uh, these presentations on our phone number. Lusekelo, I ask you to attach your number to the comment box so that people can get in touch and get uh, this presentation. Um, we are going to go into our second speaker without wasting time. Uh, my name is Benson Spangano, by the way. I'm a corporate moderator and uh, a skilled enumerator. Thank you for joining us. I am going to call in um, Ndela Sichizia, who, uh, who is a marketing expert and the current head of marketing at Zamtel, and is a founder and managing partner 
at Mwenzo Innovations Limited. He will be speaking on how to build a strong personal and professional brand. Ndela. Hi, good, good afternoon and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Captain Benson. I do hope uh, I'm loud and clear for everyone. Can you get me kindly confirm? Yes, we are, you are clear. Great, great stuff, great stuff. All right, so I'd really like to thank the organizers of this forum. I think it's uh, such a pleasure that uh, you put up such a brilliant idea. And it's quite humbling for me to have this uh, opportunity I want to believe the first time to speak to the UNSA, uh, UNSA students and uh, also like to thank you, uh, Benson, who's doing quite a great job so far. And uh, for me, it's really that uh, I can share the little that I know. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, uh, yeah, allow me to be, I know Susiku has made me look underdressed. Uh, he's looking so immaculate. But uh, weekends, I, I kind of choose to dress down and just be in this. And then because I'm talking about branding, as you get to know me a little bit more, you will notice that uh, this is also part of my brand. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, kind of deliberate that um, I come out and uh, personify the topic that I'm speaking to uh, today. So uh, without further ado, I'll get straight into the topic. So. And I think uh, looking at the overarching theme, which is positioning self for opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, one thing you should realize that um, from the time that you are born, you are living in a competitive world. You are living in a very competitive world, starting from your family, um, your, your unique family, the nuclear family, your outer family. You find that if there are resources in your home, you're all being given probably equal resources as the resources start being shared with the extended family and all that, the community, you are all striving to get the best of those opportunities and resources so that you can amount to, to be something. So you live in a competitive world. That's why it's a very important topic to dedicate to this afternoon to look at positioning yourself because where resources are not in abundance as, as as reality is most of the time, you need to find a way of standing out from the crowd so that you, you, you bring the opportunities to yourself. So you are, you are, you are striving for positions in employment, in business, uh, sometimes even in relationships. So you, you've got to position yourself. So because of that innate competition, from that apparent competition that exists wherever you are, you need to know that from the time you start building your brand, your career, your defined, uniquely defined personality, you need to know how to do it. And that's what I will be attempting to take you through in the next uh, uh, few minutes, uh, about 20 minutes or so. So like I rightly introduced Andela Sichiz as my name. And just kindly hold a second. Uh, okay. Yeah, so Ndela Sichiz is my name. Currently, um, I'm working as the expert in marketing at uh, Zamtel. I'm leading the marketing department. I've done a couple of things uh, in the few years that I've been working in the industry. Hearing you telling me that I've uh, saying that I've done about 16 years now starts making me feel like, oh, actually, I've been, I've been around for, for a few years. Yeah, so uh, mainly it's uh, two things maybe a few things that I do. I'm, I'm in full-time employment, but I run my small company called Mwenzo Innovations. Mwenzo has been responsible for a few things in the industry. Um, I've done personal branding for individuals, for corporations, a few small ones, a few big ones. I've done works for Zambia Sugar Company, for Barclays. I've done um, a previous, my previous role was at Atlas Mara, uh, where I started with, building the Atlas Mara brand from the scratch. I was part of the small team uh, that worked on building the Atlas Mara brand. 
uh, creating whatever you know about Atlas Ma, at least I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that has gone through my hands. Uh, the Zambia Institute of Marketing, uh, the logo, the branding that you see about whatever they do, I, I created that, the public service pension, I've done that. I've done stuff uh, for Cavmont. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad that uh, I was honored to be the best marketer in Zambia in the year 2018. I think coming from uh, a period where I'd done quite a number of things. So my agency is still growing, it's still being built, uh, but I think because I've got to dedicate quite a lot of time to my personal job. There's a reason why I've mentioned these organizations or the things that I've done, because I got most of those jobs out of positioning or being connected or having a personal brand. So that's why I, I got to, 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 to mention those things. So I'll, I'll build on that as I move into my presentation. So personal brand, I know all of you think of personal branding in different ways. You think of it in um, many, many different ways. Many people might think it's about just being popular. You, you wear a certain type of clothes, you speak a certain type of way, you frequent certain places. And uh, yeah, he's popular, she's popular, she's a PR person or she's good in marketing. Uh, but when you go to the nitty gritties of what really a personal brand, it's, it's about what makes you as a person, not what you wear, not the, the social media platforms you are popular uh, at, but it's those things that are spoken about you when you are not there. Who's Indela? Who's, who's Ndana? Who's Susiku? Those things that will be said when someone says, oh, he's the accountant, but apart from just being accountant, is actually the accountant that developed the uh, what what model. This is the accountant that actually developed the LIFO FIFO, or this is the person, this is the engineer. The way we talk about people like Peter Drucker, he was a management consultant or management guru, but we know of theories and models that people like him developed. We talk about the Pareto principle. Those people could have been economists, engineers, and so many things that we are all, but there's something specific that they did. They brought in efficiencies. They brought new ways of doing things. And that's what a brand should be. There should be something unique and strong about you that people should speak of when you are there and when you're not there. So it's the act of really identifying, positioning, and promoting yourself in the professional world. So you need to know from the get-go that this brand that I want to build, is it for me just as a social person? You know, I know how it is being on campus. You know, you, you have those people who are, who are just everywhere. Bachimwera, you know, something happened. The gig is the one in forefront. You are popular. What's your brand? Yes, you have a brand, but professionally, is it a strong brand? Yeah, most, more likely not. So you need to know what kind of brand you create because you're building a brand that you want work for you for years to come. A brand that's going to leave a legacy. It's really about you. Who are you? If I am a marketer, which I am, what kind of a marketer am I? What have I done to the industry? What impact have I uh, given the industry? What legacy do I want to leave? I'm very strong and I, I, I love brand marketing. Marketing is very wide, but I create brands. I build brands. Some things that I cannot even talk about here. I've even had uh, politicians coming to consult because they want to position themselves. So it's really about who you are, what your strengths are, and what you should be known for. So building a brand, ladies and gentlemen, it's a bold task and undertaking. Because some people are going to think that you just want to be a show off. You just want to be known. You just... but. When you're building a brand, it's serious business because branding brings value. So you don't need to be shy about it. It's really becoming uh, conscious of your unique differences. I remember back in the day, um, my first marketing course, I did it from Evelyn on College. From the first year, I, I said, I love this stuff. I, I, I wanna be one of the greatest marketers in this country. And I kind of started showing and doing that even to the point where some of the people said, hmm, you're, you're too much into this marketing thing. Eh? I joined the Marketing Association. I joined the Zambia Institute of Marketing uh, where I've even sat on the board for four years. I joined them when I was still a student, uh, 2001, 2003, when I was doing my first course in marketing. But it's because 
I determined from the get go that I'm into this thing with both my feet. And that's what you need to do. When you know what you want to be known for, what you want to live for, what you want to work for, be bored, be dedicated to it. So it's really being about strategic. That's why I say you don't do it haphazardly uh, because you're common, because you're known, because you're a handsome guy, a lot of ladies like you, you're a beautiful girl and you're popular. Um, those are just aesthetics. But you want when you sit on a table with the director at Zikta, with the MD at APSA, with Mr. Nasinda, you want to have a, a decent and a very intelligent conversation beyond your looks, beyond the popularity that you have in your small circles. You need to be strategic. You need to create it. You need to plan your brand. And remember, we're talking about building a brand professionally. Ladies and gentlemen, so what is personal branding? It's about influence. Remember, and I'll keep distinguishing this as, as I move on. It's about influence. So there are people who are popular. We see in Zambia now people being called influencers, people being called celebrities, people being called um, so many things. Some are just popular. They are not strong brand professionally. Some are celebrities, and the celebrity has their own popularity, and they build a brand. But you will start realizing that some of these things you start distinguishing and putting people in categories they need to belong to. Because when you're talking about a strong professional brand, it has certain ethos that go with it and that go with longevity. If you look at musicians like Lionel Richie, I know I'm a little bit old, not, not too old, I'm just 40. These people have stayed in music a 60-year-old will listen to that person, a 50-year-old, a 40-year-old, a 30-year-old. They've established themselves strongly as a musical or a musician, as a brand. We've got musicians in here that are strong celebrities, strong brands, but they also start getting mixed up with, they want to do commercials, they want to be in adverts, they, they want to be political chanters, it's a choice made. But if you're looking at your brand in longevity, do you think people will remember you as Spooky Mulemwa, as JK, as Mampi, who dominated the music industry for 40 years, for five decades? The choice is up to you, the person who's building your brand. So if you go mishmash, wishwash, and do so many things, Today you're doing adverts, today you're doing, you are chanting this, tomorrow you're singing music, uh, really. Uh, for your musical brand, the choice is all. So even for you, I'll leave it up to you. You want to be this popular person, you want to be a basketballer, you want, because you're so good at your game. Next you are on Unza Radio, next you are on uh, Kayaofa, this fellowship. Uh, being a Christian is not like a hobby or a brand thing, but there's something that you've got to stand for consistently. It's the value that you want to command in your space, in your space of, of, of interest and uh, professional skill. The personal brand is about the relationships, the, the quality, the value that you bring to the relationship that you are in, in the professional circles. The last point on this slide is, it's the goodwill on your personal balance sheet. What I mean is building a brand takes time. You, you, you're not gonna build a social media uh, page handle or something, start boosting it, start posting anything that will make you popular in the shortest period of time. It takes time. It, it takes time. I, I will speak personally. I first opened my Facebook page, I think in 2010 and I, I only reached 5,000 last year in 20, 2020, uh, which is 10 years. And if I look back at my old posts where I was a bit all over, sometimes you're talking about soccer, those days I used to love Manu, but I found it's a necessary emotional investment. So I, I moved until I started saying, I need to properly establish my brand 
and 90% of the things that are going to talk about are around marketing, around branding, maybe youth mentorship or motivation. But a few times I say, again, you cannot just be all talking business and serious stuff. Once in a while, I'll throw in a light moment and just, and, and just have a joke, you know? But I think predominantly what you're going to see in my communication is stuff that deal with my area of expertise. And it's largely, that's, that's, that's what I do. So when you are consistent on that part, it's like you're depositing into your balance sheet. When you are interacting and building that strong relationship, you, you are creating goodwill. How I interact with you, the feelings that I will leave you with after this presentation is a deposit into my balance sheet. What does it take to build a strong brand? It's those four things mainly, all right? Those four things, excuse me. You need to have the moral power. You cannot be talking about human rights when you're abusing your lecturers, your spouse, your partner. Because just, a, just, just a minute, uh, um, Dela. Okay. Uh, Michelle. Michelle Mbewe, Michelle Mbewe, your microphone is on. Thanks. You can continue, then. All right. So what does it take to build a strong brand? You need to have the moral power, number one. You, you cannot be talking about child rights on TV, on radio, in the newspapers, when you're the one who's always working your children or your dependents. You, you cannot do that. The things that give you a moral right or the moral power, it's the things you are consistent about in public and in private life. So when I am an advocate for let's say environmental degradation or what, you should find me doing that consistently wherever I go. I should not throw a bottle of water through my window when I'm driving. So there are things that should give you a moral right. I cannot be talking about adultery is bad being a man when I've got a string of girlfriends. So there are th certain things that to put you on a pedestal, give you the right to speak about, to give you a strong brand about it when you have the moral right and the moral power. So whatever brand you're trying to create, Remember, a brand is built over time and over years. Well, if you want, you can do it. Um, you okay, can continue. Okay. okay, I think we are good. So you need to have the moral power. Number two, you need to have the mental power. Mental power is really about, you need to have the knowledge. If you want to declare yourself as uh, economists, the way we get uh, when there's a new economic thing, we, we usually know the people that are going to, to make uh, statements about this. You hear of people like uh, Habazoka, Noam Koma, uh, and quite a few other economists. And it always goes Zambian economists or top economists, if it's a legal issue, top lawyers. Uh, you need to have the mental power, which means you need to have the knowledge. So if you're going to be a soccer analyst, and the only thing you know is Zambian football and uh, European uh, 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 Premier League, you will be short. So you need to constantly be getting knowledge. Whatever you want to build yourself in as a profession and the brand that you want to have, continuous learning is a demand. So if the way I took up marketing and then I broke it down and said, I've taken more interest in brand marketing, I do that consistently continuously. It's about applying the Kaizen principle that I will keep no uh, learning about this stuff because for, for you to create a strong brand, you need to have that mental power. When you open your mouth, people should say, ah, chidina data, chimdara. Oh, ah, that lady knows stuff. That's when people start giving you respect in your field because you've got the knowledge. Don't just go and Google things for two minutes and you want to to speak as an authority in that place. Your brand will be weak. You need to have the physical power. Then, th So this comes to the thing that we often talk about or assume is branding. So the physical power is how you look, how you dress, how you speak, what kind of uh, dress code you, you adopt, okay? 
the people we see that sometimes just like African wear, the people, ladies that we see that just love natural hair, it's a brand style that they've developed. So you get to pick something that will be uniquely identifiable to you as a person in terms of physical appearance. How you speak, when you want to be a strong brand, it's important that you invest in your public speaking skills, in your writing skills, because you are addressing a wide audience. A strong brand should be known to people, it should not be a secret. So if you choose to get into there, stand out and be known. But for you to get there, you need to account yourself uh, worthy to be there. So your, your eloquence, you need to work on your, your, your language, your speaking, your writing, your communication skills. Siku talked about even spelling errors and how you put up your words, your posts. Those things need to point. The profile that you put up on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on LinkedIn, or whichever uh, profile uh, channel you're on, those things should speak how you want to be known. I would personally tell you that most of the time, my favorite colors are black and white. I would wear white shirts at work from Monday to Friday. Over the weekends, I always wear my, my hat. And it's part of the small thing to do with branding, but those are things that I've chosen. Then you need to have the spiritual power. What is the value system that operates in you? What are your ethics? What are your personal values? Everyone would want to say, oh, I'm, I love it, I believe. But there are values like uh, long-term serving. There are values like hard work. Uh, there are people who are OK with being late, but they are hardworking. They are intelligent. You, you need to have certain values like, I cannot lose time. I cannot compromise family time. So there's something which is spirit should drive what you do to have a strong personal brand. So you need to have mental power, moral power, physical power, and spiritual power. And you should also know that whatever I am and that I want to be is because there's a God who's created me and he created me with a certain form that I can speak this way, I can write, or I can create and innovate. You know that there's something in you that you were born with. It's a spiritual power of knowing that I am capable, I am able, I'm well able. That's what spiritual power talks about. How to become an influencer. Remember I said to be a strong brand, you need to influence. Yeah. It's not about being popular, but you need to influence. So you need to dominate your environment. Please pardon the, the noise in the background that you're getting, um, you know, when, when you're at home on a Saturday. Uh, the other bosses are also doing that thing. So pardon, I hope it's not definitely nice. Uh, if you could just allow me to ask that I get a little bit of some silence. Just one minute pause. Yeah, no problem. You can go ahead. Um, in case you're just joining us, this is uh, um, on the Baker's Debates Committee um, presentation on networking okay. and personal branding. All right, okay, we can continue. Yeah, so how do you become an influence? You, you have to dominate your environment. So these things of trying to be the good person, shy, you know, you, you don't want to look like you are striving for recognition. If you want to be a brand, if you want to be strong, and you know at, that you're good at what you know, you need to make your presence known, dominate your environment. So like Sikwa also mentioned, you cannot be in this, you're an economist today, you're talking about soccer, you're talking about religious things, about politics, dominate your environment, choose your associations. If I am a marketer, most of the time I should be relating with people that either bring business to marketing or where I can find business for marketing. If I am a mentor, youth mentor, I need to find myself, myself speaking to people that are fellow mentors or people that do similar things or the youth that I'm targeting to speak to. Find the associations that relate to the brand that you want to build. Don't confuse, and I've already talked about it, firm popularity with influence is totally different. 
A strong brand is the one that commands respect. That com Some of the brands that we see in Zambia, they are ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys who are very popular, but some of them for the wrong reasons. They stand out there, they are known, they are popular, but are they a strong brand that can influence? The question remains with you. Influential people are not necessarily popular, but rather impactful. What should a strong brand be? It should be original. Don't try to be somebody else. You can be motivated, you can be influenced, you can be encouraged or mentored by somebody, but don't try to be you. God created us all uniquely different. Even fraternal twins, they are different. So you find that your fingerprints are different, even your brand should be that different. Be original. I remember there's a time I attempted uh, that being an MC, just a general MC, you know, doing corporate events, weddings, because I was just starting, I assumed I needed to be a comedian. I wanted to be this and that. And I don't think I did very well in that time because I was trying to copy someone. I wanted to be live, I wanted to be, but I'm not a comedian. I know I've got a bit of a sense of humor, but I'm not a comedian. I didn't do too well. Until I switched off for some years, then I went back and said, I'm gonna be me. I'm going to do it in my own style. And it started working. And I said, I'm going to, I think mostly do corporate events. Then I found, started finding myself comfortable just being me, be original. It should be planned. A personal brand should not happen by accident. You need to plan it. Who do you want to become? Then it's also got to be audacious. I've already spoken about, you need to be bold. People think when you're trying to stand out, you're trying to show off. You just want to be known. You just want the likes. You want the following. If there's a brand you are strong about and you know that it should work for you, be audacious and very consistent. What you talk about today, what you do in your private life, what you do on social media should be very consistent. What can a brand do for you? When you are known, you become top of mind. The promotions come, they'll think about you. Let me give you a bit of history. When I started my job, my first job in 20, I first graduated from Middle on in 2004. So my first job was at a small company called Net Media. That's the first job and the only job that I saw in a newspaper I applied for and I got it. My second job was at Barclays Bank, 2005. So I used to go, I am still a member of the UCZ church. I go to a section eight, which is in Ibex, Kablonga, Mtendere, somewhere there. So at the fellowship, and this is the, the issue of positioning yourself, networking and branding yourself. So I go for a fellowship, recently graduated with my diploma from Evelyn on. So I'll tell the people, the big people in the fellowship, after a fellowship, you know, you have your teas, your coffees, your juice, drinks, some snacks. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm a graduate, I've got a diploma in marketing. So. There's a time when there, was, there were openings at Barclays Bank. So one of the ladies from church, me and my friend, I thought those young boys from church, they're actually looking for jobs. So I said, young man, please send your CV and come and see me in my office tomorrow. And that's how I got my job, my, my job at Barclays. Somebody called me, told me to apply, go see them at the office because they knew that I had a qualification that was meeting what they were looking for and I was ready and I'd told them about it. Those are connections. I've told them I'm a marketer who have got a qualification. They remembered me. My second job was um, at, Cel at Celtel. So Celtel, no, no, in fact, it was Celtel then Barclays. Celtel, one of my friends I used to be with in college remembered me. Oh, my friend is still at work and he's so passionate about this marketing. They're looking for call center agents. I was speaking course that time, you are through to Celta and Della speaking, I might help you. He remembered me, he asked me to apply and I got it. Then Barclays and then multi-choice. 
So I was I worked for Barclays for nine years then. Somebody within the business, I was in the bank, but my heart was in marketing. Somebody calls me and says, you know that MultiChoice is looking for a marketing manager. So I didn't see the advert, I didn't hear about it. Someone says, and you love this marketing thing. Maybe give it a try. I became the marketing manager for MultiChoice 2014. Then Atlas Mara. So one of the people that I worked with at Atlas Mara, and because I performed as exceptional, this I can proudly say, when Atlas Mara was saying we are about to join Finance Bank and Bank ABC, they need a strong marketer to come and set up, build this brand. I was called by somebody I'd worked with in the marketing department, who was my boss, he said, can we come and work together on this project? It's about networking, it's about proving yourself, it's about positioning yourself. And where I am now at Zamtel, so I've done Zamtel, MultiChoice, Atlas Mara, Barclays Bank, Net Media, Celtel. Only one job did I see in the newspaper and apply for. The other job, you know what it means. So position yourself, seek advice. So as you position, get to talk to people. So when, 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 when so let me put it this way. What your brand does for you, it starts speaking for you. People will know you for who you are. People will start coming to you to seek advice. People will start coming to you to work with you. They want to be with you. They want to, to, to be mentored by you or they want to mentor you because they've seen potential in you. People will be willing to work with you because they've seen the strong brand in you. So now to connect to the topic of the day, you have a strong brand. You know who you want to become. You need to position yourself. Like standing ready. You know when we are at an event and we are waiting for the guest of honor, we position ourselves so that we can welcome them, give them a greeting. That's how you should take your career. Position yourself. How do you do that? Number one, you need to know yourself. These things that I've been talking about, about personal branding, but know who you really are. What are your strengths? What are you good at? Ladies, especially young ladies that I'm speaking to from Unza, you will be getting into industry and society very soon. Because you are a young lady, you will have certain pressure that people will be posing on you, especially men. Uh, people want to mentor you, want to coach you, but they might have other vested vile interests. My advice to you is be like a hair hostess. Have you seen the, the hair hostesses, how they behave? They'll show you as if they're really in love with you, but it's part of their work. Be nice to them because you're maintaining work relationships. Be nice with them because you're building a network, but do not compromise your morals. Do not, you are always in power and you're always in control. As you build your brand, be cheerful, be nice. Don't be a flirt. Be nice, be cheerful, be professional. That will count for you. At a point where you almost confuse someone, it's just nice, it's shit. That's a reality. As you get into the industry, start finding reality. Remember that. Yeah, hostess will laugh with you, smile at you. So, oh, is that the book you're reading? Oh, I actually also read it. It's interesting. Oh, okay, I hope we get to have a moment we can chat. She's just doing her job. Set personal goals and be consistent, be dedicated. Having a strong brand is not easy. Why do we have very few people we can point to as strong brands in any industry? It's because it's not an easy thing. It's not an easy task. You need to be consistent. You need to be disciplined. The things you do in private, in public, they've all got to be consistent. I cannot be talking about being a nice man, a loving man when I'm abusive to my wife at home then my personal brand gets diluted. So said personal goals, who do you want to become? Back then I was in college and one of the people I was looking up to, I didn't know that one of the days in future, I will come and take over from his job. The first marketing manager for, for multi-choice was in the position for 17 years. I knew him when I was still a student. I didn't know that that's the person I'm going to take over from. I was the second marketing manager for multi choice in Zambia. Do not be afraid. Do not be shy. 
to present your strength, flaunt your character, flaunt your strength. If you know that you're good at public speaking, ask for an opportunity to speak. What Captain Benson is doing, not everyone can do it. Do it with pride because a strong brand brings value. Remember the networks, the relationships that you're building, that's how you position yourself. You remember the story I've told you about how I find my jobs? Is positioning. You're talking to an elder church. It's nothing to do with marketing. Probably an elder doesn't even know about marketing. Find a space where you can connect to share your moment, to share what you're good at. And lastly, place yourself on the radar. There are so many associations. I told you I joined the Zambia Institute of Marketing when I was still a student. I've been in that institute ever since. It's been on the radar. The top marketers in Zambia have interacted with them personally, those that were inspiring, those that were teaching us, be on the radar. Tell them, oh, okay, I had a diploma, now I've got a degree. Oh, in fact, now I've just finished my master's. And that's how you do it. Be on the radar. No, I'm actually finishing my paper. I did the research. No, I actually did a project for Pamalat. You tell them. I did the research for my hell drink for Pamalat and Trade Kings. Back then as a student, I worked at ZNBC as an intern. All those things, you think about it. Ladies and gentlemen, to be a brand is a matter of choice, but it's a responsibility that really sits on you. So as I close, I'll just say, the choice is yours to be or not to be. Thank you. Over to you, Captain. Uh, thank you so much, Ndeila. That was a very, very insightful presentation, very deep. I'm sure the ladies are very, very inspired as far as uh, uh, being professional out there and not being a flirt when you are uh, have, having an opportunity to interact with workmates. Yeah, so it was a very good presentation. I, for one, have learned a lot from you. And thank you so much. Um, uh, apologies, I'm outside because there's no power in the house and there's so much noises. So uh, we are going to get into the question and answer session where you get to answer, I mean, to ask your questions and uh, we'll get to interact for only about 20 minutes. But before I get to those that will be able to turn on their, uh, you know, um, video and audio so they can verbally ask the, their question. I'll first read the questions that are, were presented earlier by people on this platform. Um, let me just read them. Uh, before I do, I want to encourage those that are not really familiar with uh, Umza Baker. This is the University of Zambia Business and Economics Association. And uh, if you want to be part of this association, you have to pay an amount of 45 kwacha. This is a very, it's a wonderful association. It exposes you to a lot of things. I'm actually an alumni of Unza Baker. I was vice president in the Intech 2019. Yeah, so um, there are a lot of subcommittees that are involved there. There's an internship committee, so that you can position yourself to gain an internship. There's media and arts committee. There's, um, you know, um, debates committee, projects committee, and many other committees. Yeah, so I'll get right into the questions, and we we'll, we should get we should begin to to start chatting. So the first question that we have here is uh, uh, is saying, is Nasinda, Mr. Nasinda, I hope he's still around. So he's saying, what advice? do you have to individuals whose aim is to be self-employed from the start of their career? You can take this one as well. How can you balance, Mr. Nasinda, how can one balance their career and passion that is interest on social media? And yeah, you can take those two questions and then maybe you can do other ones. Thank you so much, uh, Benson, for questions and uh, 
Well done to Ndela for that wonderful presentation. The first question was asked by Nyama Mutondo. What advice do you have for individuals um, whose aim is to be self-employed uh, from the start of their career? If you go back to the presentation I made earlier, I talked about the job market being very, very small and shrinking at a very fast pace due to COVID. It means that a lot of people who were previously in employment are now no longer working. And those who have never worked before are graduating, are finding it much, much more difficult to work. So how do you earn money using your skills? This is the essence of this discussion. How do you position yourself? How do you brand yourself? How do you leverage your networks for you to be able to thrive as a businessman? So for me, business will thrive if you understand it, and if you choose a practical business. I'll give you a simple example. In the neighborhood where I live, just about two or three houses away from me, there's a shop that is owned by the Rwandese. Are we together? There's a shop that is owned by Rwandis, and everyone, everyone in the community goes to buy things from them. But I see a lot of people who are on social media advertising their products, finding it difficult to find customers, to make a sale. Why? You are selling a product that is not marketable. You are selling a product is not needed. So in establishing a business, if you really want to make money and uh, do a business that is meaningful, start with needs. Identify what a need is. What do people need on a daily basis that they can't do without? They need bread, they need sugar, they need vegetables, they need cooking oil. In a time of a crisis like this, during the pandemic, will people stop eating bread? No but probably they may stop wearing expensive perfumes. Are we together? So identify a business that deals with needs and not luxuries or wants, because in a period of crisis like now, you'll find that people start abashing things that they normally do. Usually when a flight is mid air and it's stable, uh, before this presentation, I was chatting with one of my friends, Captain Besamumba, the youngest uh, female captain. So I was just trying to get some insights. I asked her, Besa, what is networking? What does it mean to you? So she, she shared about networking, but in the airline industry, when, this, when the plane is flying high and it's stable, you will find that everyone is at ease. They are sleeping. They are having wine. They are having coffee. But immediately one engine fails and the other one fails and the plane begins to uh, nose dive. The captain will say, can you buckle your seatbelts? Can you wear your, 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 your life jacket? In a period of crisis, you let go of your luxuries. It's not time to have wine. It's not time to read your magazine, to sleep in your, in your, in your, in your, in your seat. It's time to wake up and just keep the things that are essential. We are now in a crisis. It may take a bit of time. It may take a bit of time to come out of the crisis. So deal with issues that uh, people need. One of the simple things that you can think of is how can you sell face masks just face masks, N masks. How do you make a brand of face masks that can become so attractive that it penetrates the whole of Zambia? Don't think about selling expensive perfume. Don't think about selling expensive cars. Well, I know that may be your niche and your strength, but if you want to survive in times of crisis, if you want to establish a business that will last for a long time, start with the basics. Be humble, be like the Rwandese. Don't come up with business plans which look so fancy on paper, but when you execute them, they are not workable. I hope that has been helpful. The second one is how can you balance your career and your passion on social media? That's a very important question, and that's a question that I asked myself. So who is Susiku? There are different faces to me. There's Susiku, the chartered accountant. 
the Susiku, the youth development practitioner, the Susiku, the marathon runner, and then there's just me. People, people who know me from childhood, they'll just say, ah, you know, people who just call me. So how do I resonate with all these? When I did uh, a SWOT analysis, I asked my friends, that time I was working for an organization called the Kafue Board Regional Training Center. It's a training center that offers uh, services to the entire Southern Africa, to the entire Sub-Saharan Africa. It's an international organization. So I asked my friends, you read my Facebook posts. What comes to your mind when you see my Facebook posts? If you can do that analysis, it will help you. If you've never done it before, I'm challenging you to do that. So, and I asked them to give me professional feedback. So I went to trusted voices, about 20 of them, and I told them to tell me what they think about my Facebook posts. Some of them told me that my pictures were not on point. Some of them told me that they were confused. When they went to my Facebook page, they didn't know who I was because today I'll post about accounting, tomorrow about soccer, tomorrow about music, tomorrow about fire trucks, the other day about anything else that's happening in the country. Tomorrow I'll post about running, tomorrow I'll post about youth development, people were confused. So one recommendation that what my friend gave me was that, can you separate Susiku, the accountant, from Susiku, the marathon runner, from Susiku, the youth development practitioner? So I ended up creating a page from my marathon runs. So if you go to Facebook and just search Susiku's long walk to fitness, you will see all my posts about how I execute my fitness plans. So if I run, I post it on Susiku's long walk to fitness. If I've got a conference, a shake-up conference, I go to my page, Youth in Leadership. That's where you will find stuff about um, uh, my youth development. If you go to my LinkedIn, my LinkedIn is just accounting, it's just business, it's just finance. When people go to my LinkedIn, they are very clear about the kind of person that they are meeting. So, and then when you go to my ordinary page, that's where I now interact with people. I'll talk about uh, stuff that may be happening in the country. But of course, I maintain my originality. So if you want to maintain being a professional and running your business, open a separate page for your business. People will know. People will know. If you go to ShopRite today, you, you know the owners of ShopRite, where they come from, the investors. They don't need to put their names on, 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 on the page to say uh, ShopRite is owned by Susiku. No. ShopRite is ShopRite. When you want to go to the Facebook page for ShopRite, you know that you are going to hear about promotions, about prices, about new products, about new stores, and the like. So even you as an individual, separate yourself. Uh, Ndela, the, 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 the marketer, must be different from Ndela, the golfer. Ndela is, is a golfer, by the way. He loves golf and uh, he loves sports. So uh, I hope that I have been as clear as, um, as is possible. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Siku. Uh, there are always uh, problems with, with, with uh, virtual events, especially on a Saturday. You know, the bosses are around. I'm facing the same problem as uh, uh, Cheesia, where children are around and they're running around. Yeah, so um, I, want to, I want to get somebody from uh, the participant to at least ask a question, you know, verbally. We want to see the excitement from some of the participants, but I can't see hands here. I can't see hands. Does anyone have a question? Yes, you can go ahead. Tell us your name and you can make a contribution or your question. Be brief. Your audio is not clear. Hello, can you hear me? No, we can't. We can't hear the participant. We cannot hear you. Um, I'm sure you just type in your question. Any other person? I just want to get one or two. Uh, Ruben, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, for me, I my question is, is, is based on the 
the social networks, of course, I'm, I'm directing my question to Mr. Susiku. And um, of course, you talked about the social networks and also the people that you're supposed to put in your circles, probably. So I wanted to, to seek some clarification. How do you know? Because I think uh, when it comes to, um, of course, apart from LinkedIn, when it comes to Facebook, we have no control on who is genuine and who is not genuine when it comes to, uh, 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 of course, who is supposed to, uh, to come in my circles as, and be my friend. And then I also do not know how you can also determine or maybe which ways you can use to know that this person is able to help you or probably support you with the activities that you are actually doing and also maybe you know put yourself in that brand. So I just wanted to seek that clarification. How do you know or how do you determine the genuinity of a person whom you are going to allow in your circles? Yeah, thank you. I hope that was uh, clear, Susiku. Uh, before you get to answer that question, we'll get two more questions, and then we can uh, wrap up as you give your, your responses. I want uh, another hand, at least you can direct your question to um, Dela as well. Um, MMT, you can come in. I want somebody who can, who can bring in video so that we can see the excitement. <laughs> Uh, hello. We can hear you. We can hear you. Thank you. Thank you so much, moderator. Thank you. Uh, so you said you wanted a question, but mine is a compliment. So through the moderator, please permission that I should proceed with the compliment. Please be brief. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you so much to the leadership of Unza Baker to, for having brought this uh, insightful interaction and discussion. Thank you so much, Comrade Susiku, for such a powerful uh, presentation. And I just want to encourage everybody to definitely tap into the, the insights that have been unleashed by our friend, the Chartered Accountant Susiku, who is also a SCCA uh, advocate. I also just want to thank Ndela for such a powerful presentation that you've brought on to us. I've learned a lot. I've grown to love, to love branding. And I'm happy I can see the hands that have been behind the Atlas Mara branding. I just loved what was going on with, uh, with Atlas Mara when they're coming into the country. So my name's Amuale M. Tembo, CA Zambia Brand Ambassador, Chartered Accountant in Zambia, working for one of the audit firms, so passionate about leadership growth and accountants and business. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you so much, MMT. Um, thank you. Uh, I'll get one more question and then we can see how the program grows. Uh, Faith Chi, Chishim, Chish, Chisamba, is it? Chishimba? Yeah, Chishimba, you can come in. All right, um, my question is uh, concerning branding. Um, and it is Director Stondela. So my question is, how do you um, brand yourself without overselling or underselling yourself? Because uh, some of us who would be graduating from universities and different institutions would want to sell ourselves for, uh, even as we position ourselves for opportunities, then how do you brand yourself without overselling or underselling yourself? Thank you for that question. Uh, is there any other question for both gentlemen? You can raise your hands as I before I tell them to respond. Um, Dana, you can come in. Uh, yes, actually, I typed in. I typed in what I said. Can you get me now? Hello. Yes, we can. We can get you. Um. Personally, I don't believe in social media. Actually, I'm not on any social media platform. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. Um, I found that it's, what I felt is that it wastes time. So what I believe is, let's just say when I'm, let's just say, okay, I'm, if I was to go into business and I've got a product, if I create a product that's valuable, all I need is a few people to like the product and the word will spread. And actually, I do, I do, I do, I, I don't know if I can say I agree with you, 
on the part that social media is important, but I only see it as important when you're beginning the initial push, the initial push for your product so that people can see. And then after that, I think the rest of the information can spread by word of mouth. Then I just, I just wanted to get your point of, point of view on that, since you're more experienced and I'm still a student. Thanks a lot, Ndana. I will allow um, Ndela to come in first and then um, Susiku can wrap up. All right, uh, thank you, Faith, uh, for, for your brilliant question. And it, it's actually a very important thing to, to note when you're setting to craft your brand in that um, you need to know yourself, you need to know what brand you're creating, what audience you're speaking to. So once you fully understand yourself, your capabilities, your strengths, your skills, and who you're targeting to speak to, because once you've known yourself, then you know what kind of message you can use, what kind of channel you can use, where you'll be most effective. And then understanding your audience, you, you are saying, what do these people need? Because when you're building a brand, you are trying to say, what am I offering to this network, these people, these people, and um, this audience that should give them value. So if you are targeting to be speaking to CEOs, to executives, you know that these are very busy people. So if you think you are going to try and use social media, probably because those are your immediate, easy and affordable networks, you know that there are people that might be interested in using social media that might be not interested, that may not be interested in social media. So you need to know when you can find them, get their attention and not um, more like inundate them with queries, questions and uh, desire for attention. So once you fully understood them, you will know when to capture them. So in with, with directing the specific uh, question, um, of underselling or overselling is, I love this thing that I do, or I'm selling cakes, I'm selling, you need to know that at what point will I get the best attention? That is very critical. So once you've understood your audience, you will know how to captivate them, when to get them at the right time so that you get the right response. So it might be in how you communicate. There are people that don't love social media, the people that are okay with social media. But when you're crafting your brand, the channels that you choose will determine how much you get to be in their faces, in their space. But what's important in getting attention is, can I find them at the right time? Where do executives mingle? What time do they have to respond to or to get uh, to respond to me? So if somebody's an executive, probably they'll be busy in, during their work times. So send them an email, send them a text, or call them directly. If someone says, I'll call you back. So all those things are very important. But one thing you need to know is that if you've got a brand, you've got a product, you've got a service, or you've got a skill that you want to sell, be sure that you want to sell it until you have actually sold it. So do not give up where you think that maybe I'm overselling myself. It's really about applying the emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence tells you that here people are listening or here people are not listening. So you need to be very careful and you be, need to be very attentive. So the thing that I can really leave you with is develop your emotional intelligence skill. Know when people are listening, know when people are not listening. If you're using social media, the feedback is uh, almost immediate from the likes that you get, from the questions that you get, because on social media, you get people liking what you've posted. People just like, because there are people who are just um, dedicated to social media. They are just watching what's happening there, your comment on Twitter, and they just watch. They will not say anything. And there are so many that, that actually don't say anything. They just see you posting. So you post your plate of, of food, the food that you're eating. Some people, because they like what you've posted, they will 
they will like or they will comment. But those that are really interested, they will actually make a comment. So from the feedback that you get, you start seeing that, OK, here I'm, uh, I'm getting the attention of these 30, 40 people, and they've responded. And how they respond gives you a yardstick on how you are either overselling or underselling. You have people that are going to shoot you, that people are going to critique you, but all those are important. Even those that seemingly give negative comments, they are giving you feedback. So how to determine underselling or overselling is in you using emotional intelligence and reading the feedback as you engage with your audience. That will give you a proper uh, yardstick and feedback on how you are overselling your, or you are becoming overbearing to someone or to your audience, and that will definitely guide you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ndela. I would ask uh, Susiku to come in under two minutes, and uh, afterwards we'll wrap up accordingly. Thank you so much, um, Captain. Uh, I'll take the first question, uh, which was talking about um, How do you establish that someone is genuine or not? Are they a fake? Are they real? In the physical space, it's very easy because um, you can only talk to a human being that's, uh, that's alive. When they're dead, you can't speak to them. But online, it's very, very difficult because there are fake accounts, a lot of fraud stars, especially now during the pandemic because everyone is online and uh, fraudsters know that people are careless and are not taking precaution with their passwords. Uh, they, they are taking advantage of that. In the physical space, just as in the virtual space, there are a few things that I would urge you to do. One, trust your intuition. There's one thing which God has given all of us and it's God intuition. When something is right, you feel it within yourself that this is right. If something is wrong, you feel it within you that there's something that is not okay. So connect with people with whom you share the same value system. Do you share the same values? Do you believe in the same things? What are your beliefs about God? What, what, are, what, is, what are your beliefs about the sanctity of human life? Do you respect children and women? Do you respect animals? Do you respect adults? If you respect adults and you're connecting with somebody who does not, then you're betraying yourself. Number two, do a due diligence. In business, there's what is called due diligence. So before you award a contract to a consultant or a contractor, is what is called due diligence. What due diligence means is finding out in the background whether what somebody is claiming is true or not. So people say a lot of things on their social media, they write a lot of stuff on, the, on their CVs, and they put in a lot of information in their profiles. It is your duty to conduct a full due diligence. Ask the people they interact with, do you know this person? What do they stand for? What are their intentions? Ladies will tell you very clearly that before they fall for a gentleman, they find out whether he's genuine or not. Is he a player? If you don't do that, you will find yourself in very, very awkward situations. So those are basics. I just used the basic example of a lady that wants to fall for a gentleman, but you can translate it in so many other ways, especially in forming business relationships. You may find a customer who comes to you and say, okay, I'm going to buy 10,000 products of, 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 your, of your product and merchandise. And then you, you get excited, you invest money in there, only to discover that that person is a fraudster, they're not able to pay, you have invested your time, you have lost valuable customers along the way, 
and you end up doing something for someone who um, is not committed. So um, don't be so naive, do a reference check, ask, ask other people and ask them, ask the same person, what is the objective of this friendship request? What is the objective of this connection? Be bold enough to ask. It is within your rights to ask. Then, um, Mwale Tembo, thank you so much. Uh, Mwale is a brand ambassador for the Zambia Institute of Chartered Accountants. Thank you for joining, very accomplished accountant. We appreciate your presence and support for UNSA and for youth development in Zambia. There was uh, a question from uh, Ndana. If you're not on social media, for me, I think I said it in the, pres in the presentation, try. When you're on social media, it means that you exist because we are now living in the virtual world. You need to be online. That is how people are going to know you. If you are not on social media, no matter how bitter it is, uh, colleague, if you are not on social media, I'm afraid people may think that you don't, you don't exist. Barack Obama is on social media. The late Mike Kochul Fiasata was on social media. Everybody is on social media. Don't close yourself uh, and leave and adapt. Move on with the times. I know people have got different reasons. If you can't be on Facebook, at least be on LinkedIn. Because I told you earlier that Facebook is more social and LinkedIn is more professional. If you want to do business, go. Go on, go on LinkedIn. Have a business website. Publish it. How are you going to publish it? It's by being, by being online. Thank you. Um, thanks a lot, uh, Susiku. Thanks a lot for uh, that uh, brilliant answer. Thank you, Ndela, as well, for that brilliant answer. I'm sure uh, people are very grateful as, as they are able to comment their gratitudes in the comment box. Um, we have gone way past end time, so I'm sure we are going to wrap up. Uh, the event. I'll bring in uh, Lusekelo to give us a vote of thanks, and then we can close the program. Lusekelo. Thank you very much, Captain. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lusekelo Naomi Chinyama. I am the chairperson of the Unzabeka Debate Committee. Yeah, so on behalf of the executive, the Unzabeka Debate Committee Executive, I would like to uh, give thanks to the speakers. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Susi Kunasinda for coming through and imparting in us knowledge on networks, meaningful relationships, and social capital. We really appreciate um, your availing yourself to us and to this um, event. Ndela, Ndela, thank you very much. I have been impacted greatly. Um, I, have been, I have been impacted greatly and I know many other people have been as well. Um, I, would like to say, I would like to say thank you to the moderator as well, Benson Chipangano. I know this was short notice, but you have come through and you have availed yourself. Thank you very much for moderating this event so well. I really appreciate and I hope to work with uh, Susiku, Ndela, Benson and everyone else that is in the in the audience right now. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the audience as well. That is why we're here, that we may share knowledge, that we may impart knowledge. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for the time. Thank you for uh, being patient with us. We are 34 minutes late. Uh, we really appreciate your, your patience. Thank you. And we hope that you can come through to our other programs as well. So UNZABEKA is an association at the University of Zambia. It stands for the University of Zambia. Zambia, Business and Economics Association. Um, it is a paid, uh, it is a membership association. Yeah, so we have an annual fee of 45 kwacha. So if you would like to be a member, especially for UNSA students, if you would like to be a member and, and participate in more of these events, um, be sure to reach out to me. I have shared my contact in the chat box there. So reach out to me and we can, we'll be glad to have you on board. Um, last but not least, I would like to say thank you to uh, members of other members of, of Unza Baker that came through 
to organize this. Thank you very much to Cedric, our vice president. Thank you to George Manda. Thank you, Tapiwa. You guys have been of great help. Thank you very much, Bobo Liston, for this wonderful platform. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's been awesome. Yeah. So thank you very much for uh, the order as well. Yeah. So we hope to host the speakers again. We hope to host the audience as well. So yeah, you have a, a lovely afternoon. Oh, sorry. One more thing. Um, I would like to get the floor to Cedric Chuma, our our vice president of Unzabeka. He has something brief to share with us. Cedric, please. Uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, you're audible. Okay. Okay, firstly, before I pass on uh, uh, the announcement, I'd like to say this has been a very, very excellent program. Uh, kudos to all the organizers, the speakers, for inviting us with such uh, valuable knowledge. Uh, I personally, have been very, very much educated on how to build a personal brand. Um, so uh, allow me to thank everyone for coming to uh, for attending this uh, webinar. I would like to remind everyone that the Becker membership uh, is paid to the treasurer and is only 45 quarter for the entire year. And I'd also like to announce that we, as Unza Becker, launched a pre-accelerator program that is aimed at student entrepreneurs. And we are encouraging every single student, especially those who have uh, uh, joined this platform and have attended this meeting to actually use that as a platform to launch their business. And we are actually going to have mentors who are going to help with the same social uh, media marketing as well. So please take this opportunity by the horns and see where your business can grow. We have launched this for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, Cedric. Um, Susiku and Della, can you please share your uh, LinkedIn accounts uh, with our audience so that they can take note and uh, connect with you on LinkedIn, Facebook, and any other platforms that you would like to connect with them? Yeah, over to you, Benson. Uh, thank you so much, Sekelo. Thank you so much, uh, Cedric. I know uh, Sakelo just told me yesterday about the events, but I, I was able to, to say, no, we, we, we can do this because my whole entire life, one of the most important thing that I, one of the most important principle that I live on is uh, being reliable and being committed. Yeah, so I'm a corporate moderator for those that are launching books or having corporate events of any sort, you can get in touch with me. I know Unza Baker, this won't be the last time. I'm sure there are many other platforms that you're going to engage us on. Thank you so much uh, to Susiku. Thank you so much to Ndela and any other person that took part in this uh, uh, webinar. And I'm encouraging you all to really connect, starting from these two gentlemen. Like uh, they said in the beginning, um, Susiku actually mentors young people. So. This, an, this is an opportunity for you to actually get in, co in contact with them. I personally, I am gonna uh, take this opportunity to build this network. So thank you everybody for coming through. We are gonna see you in our next event. Do have a good afternoon. Thank you, bye. Oh, so people are still, <laughs> are still waiting. Okay, I'll go ahead and and just end the meeting for everyone. You have a great, you have a great afternoon. Bye.